What's up, guys? My name is Splattercat, and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. It's always so pleasant to have you all here. And you guys deserve a little recap in this next episode of our Expeditions Conquistador LP. And so, as I always begin these episodes in the same way, instead of saying where we left off, I'm going to say what happened before is that we had had a kidnapping, or a womb-napping, or a fee-napping in our group. Our favorite female, Anna Vidal, and the representative of the speedier members of our party, was kidnapped, and now she's running the risk of being sacrificed to native gods. And so we have to track her down. Now, I have a sneaking suspicion that I know where she is, but we have 13 days, which means we need to get a rolling. So let me take a look at my map here and figure out exactly where we're at, and I think if we cut west, now I don't know this by first hand values, but in a previous playthrough I found a temple up here that was scattered with skulls and things like that. I'm going to make the assumption that perhaps that is what I found in an earlier playthrough. So let's go ahead and we're going to take a look. Let me cut up into the mountains here maybe. I don't know, but it's the end of our day. So let's get everybody relaxing chillaxing waxing and getting ready for their nighttime sleepy time my favorite time of the eve and it looks like oh Anna Vidal is critic wait a minute I'm confused here oh that's never mind she got gutted okay so Anna Vidal is not kidnapped who is kidnapped someone here is kidnapped perhaps yikes let me take a look at my menu I actually apparently have completely Oh, Isabella Irunis. Okay, so I got that all wrong. What we need to do then is our our storyline companion got kidnapped. Now, that's not nearly quite as dire as losing my favorite scout, and so I really don't mind. She can get sacrificed for all I care. Eh, you know, I, I can't be noble all the time. I try, but, you know, sometimes it just doesn't fit. The shoe doesn't fit at times. Let's cruise through here. And I'm not actually entirely positive where this thing is at, but we've got a reasonable amount of time to track it down and so I think as I recall I had to approach it from a beachhead and so I'm maybe it might be safer to go down to the beach and see if we can locate her there now I'm a little curious about what happens if she gets sacrificed part of me is like really what's gonna happen but in any case we've healed Anna Vidal now or at least she's getting better we got nine meat from our last hunting party but we are consuming rations, so we need to get a move on. We need to get the ice out of our jock and get ourselves a rockin'. And so there's nothing wrong with trying to swing over this way and maybe killing this peccary on our way. We we were unfortunately ambushed. I, I really don't like the random nature of some of the events, like getting one of your people taken out of commission just randomly by a random event can be a little bit frustrating. But since this one is a storyline event, I'm a little more obliged to be gentle with my judgment of it. And it says here that Anna Vidal seems like she's gotten better. And so that's going to be pretty good. We'll bear that in mind as we hunt this peccary, this little piggy man. Well, this little piggy creature anyways. And as we approach this location, it looks like we've hit a dead end. And as I recall, when I hit this dead end, I cut this way. And I don't know if this is going to work, but all things considered, I hope it does. Because losing my my character, I almost said losing my critter, that's not very nice. Losing my character to a event like this would be, unfortunately, lackluster. And so what we'll do is we'll grab those herbs, and let's take a look at the map once more. I want to make sure that we're in the right spot. I don't know if I should carry on to the west. I don't know where I viewed this thing. I don't. My memory is not so good. You guys know that. If you're new to the channel, I am just notoriously terrible at remembering things. And so, bear that in mind as you judge me for my works. Because honestly, it's pretty rare that I remember anything. It looks like a little trail right here, maybe? Let me make sure that we're not cresting the mountains here. But yeah, I'm not really sure what we're looking for here. I, I know there's a temple up and in here somewhere, so hopefully we'll find it. We'll leave them taken care of over here, maybe? No, now we're crossing the mountains. Let's head back west along this crest, and I think we may... Well, maybe. I don't know. I may have completely misjudged this one, so... Let's take a look here and see what comes down the pipe, because sometimes... It's the best you can do, and I really, really hate the camera in this game. I sincerely wish I could zoom out further. It's obnoxious. And from what I understand from the forums, this is one of the major complaints levied at the game, is that the camera can be just unmanageable at times. Maybe we're looking at this right here? Anything? I see a miniaturized trail. 
Unless we came up this already to get here. God, Christ. Our person's gonna die. I'm pretty sure she's gonna end up dead. Yikes. Well, unfortunately, when the game doesn't give you any direction of any sort, it is, uh, pretty much inevitable. And so, <laughs> sucks to be a Roonies is my general guideline here. Unfortunately, since there's no action we can take, like, I can't put my hunters on tracking her. I can't, there's nothing I can do here. Basically, I have 13 days, which given how little you can move in this game is a very, very limited amount of time. I think she may be up shit creek without a paddle. And so, we're probably going to fail this mission, to be honest. I... You gotta point me in a better direction than Northwest. That's not the uh, best way to... I mean, Northwest partially works, but I'm not seeing anything here. I can't go over that way. Yikes. Well... There were some canoes down this way, but I think they're too far now. I don't think we're going to make it. And the canoes were next to the village anyway, so I don't really think they were related to the temple. Unfortunately, this isn't going to make for intensely educational or entertaining viewing. And I don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of where things are in this game, and the days are unfortunately so short that... Yeah, Eruni's is toast in my opinion. We have looked everywhere to the northwest. This is about as northwest as we can humanly be. There's a settlement there. I mean, I just don't know, guys. I have no idea. And so... I guess we'll just continue gathering resources and just let her go because I don't see any way to resolve this in two days. I... the directions aren't nearly clear enough. I'll read you exactly what it says to kind of absolve myself. She's going to be sacrificed to Caribs that live in the mountains near the coast to the northwest. Well, the problem with that direction is that the northwest coast here is everywhere from here over and like so. Now I know from experience it takes you at least 10 days to walk that coast. And so that leaves out the mountains, not enough time. And so unless you expressly know beforehand, and I know I've stumbled across a temple here in the past with other playthroughs, you're toast. There ain't no way you're finding it. And so, alas, goodbye, Irunis. You are dead as hell. Unfortunately. <laughs> Unless that's it right there. If I pull this off, oh my god, that is some Indiana Jones shit. Dun, 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 nah. And so, ride forth with the fury of God. Let's approach slowly. So we creep up to the ritual site with a few troops behind us and spot Esteban holding Isabella by the collar, her arms tied behind her back. The poor soldier can barely stand upright. Her head droops forward. Numerous cuts and bruises paint her skin with dark red and purple patterns. Unfortunately, the Caribs seem to take after Chris Brown. Either that or Esteban does. One or the other. Either way, he needs to be punished. As a righteous individual, I feel myself flaming. I find, Well, that's not the right word. I find myself blushing with anger and resentment. But anyways, Esteban is shouting angrily to a large group of Carib tribesmen gathered around him. We listen. You animals, you sons of bitches, disgusting savages, filthy cowards. We had an understanding she was not to be harmed before the sacrifice. You kill a woman, fine, but you get it over with. Look at this poor girl. What have you done with her? Let's wait and see what happens. After a bit of back and forth between the tribes, Shaman and Esteban, they manage to calm him down. Then they lead him over to a crude stone altar stained with blood. The shaman draws a knife and hands it to Esteban, clearly meant to be an honor, perhaps an apology for damaging Esteban's property, but the giant looks at the knife in dismay. Teresa Sanchez hoots over beside you and whispers in an urgent tone, they're going to sacrifice Isabella? We must intervene now before it's too late. Your troops look ready to jump out and raise hell. Well, hell yeah, let's do it. And so, you charge ahead into the camp and it feels as though time temporarily slows. Your eyes are immediately drawn to Esteban, who's holding Isabella by the collar, her arms tied behind her back, a large group of tribesmen gathered about them. The poor soldier can barely stand upright, her head droops forward. Wait, what? Is that a loop? Hold on. It was. When everyone turns in surprise at your sudden entrance, Isabella draws a knife from her boot and swings at the huge man. Esteban momentarily releases his hold on Isabella to avoid the attack, but as Isabella stumbles backwards out of the giant's reach, Esteban thrusts his sword through the soldier's chest, completely impaling her on the blade. Without a sound, she collapses on the ground. All hell breaks loose as your people hurl themselves at Esteban's tribal allies. Yeah, this one's going to get bloody. I hope they give me an ethical decision at the end. I really feel the need to take vengeance here and just kind of unload. 
it's you mess with the homies. You know what I mean? Like I always get that way when I play like Saints Row or like when I play Grand Theft Auto or any game where you have a group of people that you like learn about them and they're part of your crew. I can't stand that when they get killed off. It's just it's an emotional thing for me because I'm very loyal. I'm a loyal person and so I just can't stand it. Let's see what we can do here. There's that bald bastard Esteban. It looks like he's got a reasonable force here actually. We are fairly outnumbered. I mean not absurdly outnumbered. I think it's eight if I can count properly. Yeah, there's eight. And so I think what we'll do in this situation, so let's make our lines as we always do. Get everybody into a position to charge and take care of the business that is at hand. Unfortunately, wait, do I have my scout? I d no. Ana Vidal, yes I do. Amazing. And so let's consider where we might want to pipeline this battle through. I think... Oh, it's not going to let me go that far. Well, never mind then. I don't want to go that far anyways. Well, let's pass our turn. I like to watch and see how they unload first and foremost. And if I bore you with my turtling strategies, I apologize. But defensive player, you can't blame me for being cautious. Especially when faced with a superior force. I feel like erring on the side of caution when you're outnumbered is much better than charging forth like a crazed, bloodthirsty berserker and just hoping for the best. I'd like to keep this thing nice and clean, if at all possible. And so I like the tone of the music right now. It's feeling very aggressive. It's feeling very primal, violent. And so I think from right here, let's see what shots. Ooh, we don't have any shots. Let's step to the side here. We're going to shift our line a tad. And we're going to take a shot. Man-at-arms warrior, man-at-arms warrior, man-at-arms recruit warrior. Let's go for... He actually... Let's take care of him first. I mean, he's a little bit weaker, so he has a better chance of going down. And then the second that's over with, we're going to tighten ranks back up again. And then we're going to wait and see what happens. Now, they may just throw a buttload. And by a buttload, I mean a metric butt full of objects at us. Oh, he still gets to attack. That was really... A misjudgment on my part. Unfortunately, this game lacks what you had in Final Fantasy Tactics or in other games where you can mouse over and see their movement distance. That cheat is not available in this game. And so, unfortunately, you can't play that game that I normally like to play where you space yourself one step out of their reach until they get frustrated and come after you. The side effect of that is that they are now able to focus much better than we are. And I didn't bring a doctor with me, so we may have to have somebody retreat from the line. Now, we are on our heels right now, which is not where I wanted to be during the course of this whole thing. We're going to... Yikes. I don't really know who to focus on here. We got a lucky crit there. And so I think what I'll do is I'll break the line on this side, maybe. Assuming we don't have any just absurd misses like that one. So Ibarra is on my shit list right now. My absolute shit list. Because she literally may have just cost us a soldier. Well, she did just cost us a soldier. And that's not something that I'm okay with. I... Yikes. Nice job, jackass. Ugh. You've got to be kidding me. So, now we're even more on our heels. We're not even remotely set up for this fight right now. And so they've created a hole in their own defenses. Which I'm not positive why they would do such a thing. I think they're trying to attempt a attack of opportunity right there. And I'm going to be very careful with my clicking right now because I most assuredly do not want to fall through the cracks here. And so he's going to take an attack there and if I get very, very lucky with my dice rolls we can turn the tide right here. And so let's see what happens. <clears throat> and luck did not hold out for us. Ibarra, you are just worthless. I <clears throat> I don't even know what to say right now. Just a worthless excuse for a soldier. If you can't hit a target at two feet, what can I trust you to do? You know what I mean? See, he's not even a ranged guy, and he just hit me with like a 2% chance to hit from way farther than... God... Sometimes I really do hate my soldiers. Like, you wouldn't think you could feel abject hatred for a sprite or a character model on your screen, but at times, at times, my, I feel my, my blood pressure raise about things like this. Just the sheer 
If you watch the last episode, you'll note that our misses are extremely, extremely mathematically unlikely, and yet they seem to occur over and over again. And so we got a crit right there, but it doesn't quite make up for what just happened. I can't step him away. He, we're going to lose Juan Ortega, unfortunately. We are going to have substantial losses in this fight, is basically how the whole thing's going to turn out. We could, in fact, almost face an entire wipe if we get very unlucky. He's going to use his ridiculous stun right there. And so we are going to reply in kind. So there you are. You deprive me of my turn. I deprive you of yours. Tit for tat. And I hope you've got a lot to pay because we've got a lot of tat to give. And so that guy's now down. And we are left with a fairly marginalized force. I mean, what does a lantern do? Let's find... Ooh. Take that. <laughs> I burn you. I burn you in a ridiculous fashion. Wow, that actually... It's pretty effective. Ugh. God. What's going on over here? And so we may actually lose this fight. I... Oh my god. Are you serious? Come on now. I just... I'm not sure what to do with this whole thing. It looks like the fire spread, so I'm just going to throw lanterns like crazy and hopefully it works to our favor. I can't guarantee that it will, but yeah, we're probably going to lose this fight, to be honest. I don't see any way that my ranged guys are going to be able to hold off this fight if Esteban takes him out. He keeps getting lucky with his blocks. There it is again. So unfortunately... God... This is approaching absurdity, the amount of misses that I'm having to suffer from here. It is definitely approaching the realm of just like, where I call shenanigans. I... <laughs> I don't know what to say about this one, guys. This one's looking like a loss. I would have retreated had I known I was going to lose this many troops. Uh, this is one of those insurvivable situations, unfortunately. And he's now closed the gap with us, which means the fight is basically over unfortunately and so we don't have a choice but to fight away over here and he can take a shot I'm going to allow him the opportunity but unfortunately it's gonna to be too little too late at this point oh they stay on fire after they leave the region well that might work in our favor then that's really our final hope right now good well we lucked out there was no victory here by my hand. This was completely and absolutely luck-based. Luckily, oh my god, you are just... I may actually swap her out for further melee people because the fact that melee can't miss makes them instantaneously more useful than any of the ranged characters. The fact that they can miss is such a huge detriment because melee doesn't have to deal with that, which, you know, if you know anything about combat, obviously going on here there we go switch the knife I thought for a moment I mean you can miss plenty in melee and so we have several ridiculously injured people right now and it's gonna take us a while to recover from this this is a a major major loss for us it says that we won but I don't count that as a win I count that as a loss and so the battle is over you stand in what was once a pleasant mountain plateau now blood stains the grass a nasty brown color Esteban lies in the middle of the carnage his arms twitching across his heaving chest and any last words he turns his head to look at us and his weapon is broken he's going to die nothing comes to mind and so we're going to kill him he can go to hell which is exactly where I'm sending him and so you draw your sword he's not even gonna look into our eyes he's gonna kidnap our people and then murder them and he's not even gonna look us in the eyes when he dies what a sick bastard there is one thing stop Leandra her troops betrayed us and you let them escape me I let him escape she sent those marauders to burn down the Taino village in Higue it's too late to prevent that. With the rest of her people, she's going to attack Santo Domingo. Noriego won't be enough to stand in her way. You raise your sword. Esteban nods. You strike, severing his head cleanly from the shoulders. Well, we could have missed a little bit. Come on now. So ends Esteban Gallego. Let's go find Isabella. We find her body where Esteban cut her down, sprawled on the ground in a pool of her own blood. Empty eyes fixed somewhere beyond the sky. You close her eyelids and stand there for a while, your thoughts and emotions a jumbled mess. A few of your servants join you, and when you're done with your introspection, they pick up the body and carry it off to be buried. The rest of your people are returning to the caravan one by one. 
we got out of it pretty well. No, we didn't. Absolutely not. Uh, your servants are going over the bodies, and we got 1,500 valuables, 20 medicine, 50 rations, and 10 equipment. And so, in my opinion, that battle was just an abject failure. In fact, I feel like that was a major loss on my part, and I feel like I made several terrible tactical missteps right there, along with just back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back -to -back misses. It's just the sort of thing that makes me feel as though they're, yeah, I, not a situation that I feel good about. And so let's see if we can get people healed up. We have a severely poisoned individual, and he's Juan Ortega, which is one of the mainstays of our line. And we do have enough doctors, luckily. Running with four doctors right now is going to keep us in the black for healing people. Fortunately, I don't think we have enough medicine, so we're going to see how this goes. Anna Vidal and Bernardo Trevino have recovered completely from their injuries. Uh, we lost two equipment from people stealing from us because we do have a compromised guard force right now and then it disappeared before I could get it to finish what it said. So let's see what we can do with our rest here today. Anna Vidal is back up, so she's obviously going to be back on patrol. Bernardo Trevino is going to be guarding as always. Juan Ortega is still going to be getting healed. And these two are going to do herbalism because we have 21 herbs that are not changed into anything useful right now and so we need to make sure that we're supplied with enough herbs at the moment and so Rita Martinez is back in the nightly patrol returns it's immediately clear that something is out of the ordinary Anna Vidal is missing and Rita Martinez is bleeding from her nose your people are shockingly unwilling to discuss what happened and as soon as Anna turns up frowning there and heads straight to the back of the camp we'll demand that she explain she lies down with a piece of cloth pressed against her face. Are you all right? Captain Olive, broken nose, I think. How did you break it? You should put that question to Anna Vidal. I'm asking you, soldier. The soldier raises her head slightly. Anna Vidal punched me in the face. Why would she do that? Vidal has a reputation. Is that so? She sleeps around. The woman is shameless. It's an embarrassment to the contingent. I told her as much, and this is the result. She's hoeing it up on her after hours. I fail to see how that is any of your concern. She looks surprised. There's a health risk. It's none of your business, and you'll do better to remember that in the future. Let's go find Anna and defuse this. We find her at the workbenches, hammering out some dents in her armor. The damage looks old. It's probably not inflicted tonight. She glances up angrily as you approach, then averts her eyes when she realizes it's you. Martinez has accused you of hitting her. She faces us and straightens up. Capitan Martinez was of the opinion that I am too friendly with my fellow soldiers. It was an opinion she was very eager to express. This concerns your reputation for spending your nights in tents other than your own. She frowns even deeper, but no hint of insubordination enters her voice. I know my reputation. And what she does in her time off isn't my concern. I mean, really, we should probably keep that stuff out of the campsite right now. Just because you gotta keep you gotta keep people leveled. You gotta keep them squared away. You gotta keep them with a clean rack. You know what I mean when you're taking care of. Well, that's a bad pun. That is a pun that I un that was completely unintended. But she nods, and you can hear her exhale exhale a little bit. I will make it clear to Martinez that I do not tolerate rumor mongering however you will never attack a fellow soldier again understood she apologizes and sounds like she means it and so she heads off and so it sounds like we've got a little bit of inner conflict here we are going to have to arrange a memorial service for our fallen soldier unfortunately it's a little weak that we couldn't get there in time to save her but then again she pulled a knife and if I, I watch Saving Private Ryan and if there's one thing I know about a fist fight or a restrained situation pulling a knife tends to be a terrible idea and so, especially considering we were charging down the hill to save her. But in any case, let's get everybody back on guard duty, make sure everybody's doing things they should be doing. We're going to send Adel out to hunt. And then... Pedro Alvarado. Who else is still wounded? Juan Ortega. Okay, pa uh, Pedro, let's have him repair the broken equipment. And then we'll camp for the night. We find eight rations, nine meat. He fixes two pieces of equipment and then Juan Ortega is all good to go. Now let me check my quest log and figure out where we're going. And so I think it really... Where is Higüey? Let's see here. What is Higüey? I don't really know where Higüey is. All things considered, is that Higüey? No, that's Fishing Village. Let's find out here. And so, it seems like we can light up an active quest marker, but unfortunately I don't see it anywhere. And so, once again, I wish that it's a, it would give me something other than just like, there's an attack going, 
good luck finding it. I'm not really sure where Higue is. And so unfortunately, I'm just going to have to go back to Santo Domingo. I can't defend a place that I don't know where it is, unfortunately. And I don't think we have time to run around piddling away our resources trying to save people that we can't find. And so let's go ahead and rest. We're going to put everybody back on hunting duty, and I think we're good to go here. We should make more lanterns. I think that may be in our best interest. That was an amazing tactic. So I'm going to have both my doctors make lanterns. We get two more lanterns, 12 meat. We found one equipment, but then thieves stole three. So maybe I should equip that on people so it can't get stolen quite so easily. Maybe I'll do that at the end of the night here because we are approaching the end of our time. God, and I'm just, I'm having trouble letting go of that last battle. I'm the kind of person that very, I'm very competitive in real life. That's just how I am. I enjoy being victorious and riding the wave of super amazing honor. And unfortunately, I feel like I commanded very poorly in that battle. And that, in conjunction with those misses, really just caused me to take more losses than I should have. But no harm, no foul, I suppose. I shouldn't really dwell on it too much because nobody ended up being a casualty. So I guess it'll be all right. Let's set the good doctor here to arrange a memorial service. And then we're going to have the other doctor harvest medicinal herbs, which I've actually never seen pop up down below. So that seems pretty sweet. We'll do both. And so the hunting party's okay. Isabella Irunas has been laid to rest. All our expedition members gain morale, and we find seven herbs from harvesting. We'll go over and check this chest as well. I actually plan to use those lanterns fairly liberally although they seem to be quite cheesy in a sense they seem to be a li it says they're a free action they don't cost you anything and yet you can just kind of spam them at your foes let's get some more herbalism done because our medicinal supplies our ridiculous supply of opiates or whatever it is that we're feeding to our troops took a pretty substantial hit there with that last grouping of conflicts everybody kind of ended up injured in that last little go Ooh, we got two pigs in one day so let's go ahead and rest and we're going to have to assign everybody to the preservation of critters at this point. Or at least as many people as we can. Okay, so that's going to fit. We'll leave the final two doing what they're doing. Juan Ortega was off guard duty for some reason. We'll put him back on. We turn, we make 26 rations. We get another equipment and gain three meat. And I just remembered I forgot to assign said equipment. And so let's go through. And I believe I am going to start bringing the doctor with me, to be honest. What does he get in the next level? We'll level him up first. He gets revive, which actually, if that negates the possibility of being wounded after combat, I think I'm going to go ahead and level him up. And I may swap him out for one of my lower level. I mean, I'm not happy with the performance that my hunters have been doing. So I may strip one of them and take my doctor into combat with me now, especially since I have Addle to heal people. And so let's give him... Oh, I don't know. We can do... Let's go to the see what the veteran ones are. He can have increased movement. Sneak attack. He gets more damage when flanking. Walk the shots, which increases his chance to hit the more he misses. We can give him weapon proficiencies, but I think that might be a blank. Shooting at melee range guarantees a critical hit. Let's go ahead and assume that we want him to... Well, let's give him extra HP, actually. I'm going to give him a little bit of extra health because I feel like that's probably a good plan for him. We're going to level up his herbalism. And since he's usually on hunting duty, we're going to increase his hunting abilities as well. Since we have extra equipment, we're also going to get him equipped up. I'm going to give him mostly defensive stuff, but since he's not going to be partaking in the honorable quells of combat, we're not really going to equip him. Ibarra, we're going to strip because she is just disgraced to me right now. And who else can I equip better would be my question. So I do want to bring Vidal up to sergeant rank because I like her very much in combat. She does a lot of damage. Right now she's cresting almost 60 damage per swing, which is just frankly incredible. And so it's something that I'd like to work towards. I wonder when it takes her out of our roster. The nice part about Iruna's dying is we don't have to feed her anymore. I know that sounds a little mean and it sounds a little selfish, but at least we don't have to feed her anymore because she was a unit that we weren't really using to begin with. Martinez has some equipment. I don't think we're going to be bringing her into combat too much, though. Let's go ahead and we'll upgrade his knife, since I get a distinct feeling he may end up in combat on occasion. And so with that done, we'll grab these herbs. And let me take a look at my map here. I'm somewhat wondering if the jungle village over here is Higuaya. I, I don't know what to do. I, I, I'm going to break the episode off here. We're at about 30 minutes. And so I'm going to let you guys choose. I'm going to do this democratically. So if you guys want to go hunt and see if we can save Higuaya... Sacrifice? How did I fail sacrifice? I got there in time. Anyways, 
if you guys want to save Higuaya, we'll go do that and put that down below in the comments. Now, if you want to go defend Santo Domingo, put that down in the comments. It's basically a choice between wandering through the jungle looking for something and going straight home and defending stuff. And so if that's what you want to see in the next episode, let me know. That being said, my name is Splattercat. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle. I'm sorry for waxing ad nauseum about the results of that combat, which I wasn't happy with. But unfortunately, it's a side effect of my personality. I'll see you guys next time and take care out there, everybody.